Hey guys, today we're going to be looking at the Synology DS416 Slim. This is a small, the smallest NAS that Synology puts out. It is really small in size as you can see, but it does hold four two and a half inch drives, whether that be an SSD or just a standalone spinning drive. So let's go ahead and pop these in here, get this thing booted up, and I'm going to show you how easily it is to search for your uh, brand new Synology on the network because usually these get a uh, DHCP address. They don't, they're not assigned with the static IP when you first get them. So let's pop these drives in and start it up. All right, we have the four drives already in the drive bays. You have two indicator lights here for the LAN 1 and 2. This has dual NICs as well, which is nice, and a USB 3.0 on the front. And you got each indicator for each drive that get plugged to here in the back. So here's inside here's an inside look of what it looks like. You can see there's a CPU and the the board there, and then it looks like a PCI Express slot, and then you get these uh, SATA connector ports. So like I said, you got the dual NICs here. You got your power hard reset button and a USB 3.0. So let's go ahead and pop these drives in there. And then on the bottom, it does before I sell this in here, it does have a cooling fan on the bottom, which is nice. So there it is right there on the bottom. That's good to have, especially when you have four drives, spinning drives, because they get heated up a little bit. Um, SSD is not so much, but it's still nice to have that cooling feature in there for um, the motherboard and everything else that's in here running. Now, the one thing I don't like about the small unit is the performance out of it. Now, granted, it's a small unit, so you're not going to get a lot of performance out of it. But I wish you were able to at least upgrade the memory because I believe this is only a 512. Now, I do understand this is an older model, the uh, 416. They're on 419 right now. Um, and the 419 has a gig of memory, but this only has 512 of RAM. But as long as you're just doing file transfers, you're not doing any, you're not trying to install a Plex server or anything on this, you should be pretty good off. Um, and on the side here, you can see we have the status light and then our power button here and then power indicator light. So we're going to set this over here. We're going to go ahead and plug in our Ethernet into LAN 1. Then we got our power here that we're going to plug right in and plug that in there and then turn this puppy around. We we'll hit power. Now you notice the blue light would just flash for a little bit and then you're going to hear a beep. And then you're going to get a green uh, status light here. And that's when you know, when you hear the beep and you see this green, that's or flashing uh, yellow if there's no uh, hard drive array created. Um, you know you can go ahead and go to your computer and go ahead and use this Synology Assistant utility that I'm going to show you here in a minute and scan the network for that Synology drive. Before we get to the computer, I'm going to wait for us to hear that beep. And you can see we just have our indicator lights up here. And we should hear a beep here shortly once this, uh, that, that's just letting you know the OS uh, successfully booted up. And you should be able to hit it on the network. So let's just give it a minute here and wait for that to happen. There you have it. That's the beep you're looking for. We have the steady blue light. Yours might be blinking the status light uh, an amber orange if you don't have an array created. Um, but... It doesn't matter because you're still going to be able to search for it on the Synology Assistant. It's just, it will show up. So let's go to the computer now and pick it up from there. Hey guys, now we are back at the computer. Now you want to go to Synology.com slash support slash downloads. Once you get to the download center, we're going to select NAS because we're looking at a NAS product. And then we're going to type in that model number, DS416Slim. But you can type in any model here and basically get to the same thing. Um, I'm just typing my model number in there just so you can see how their download center works. So here you can download the operating system if you need to, but what we are looking for is the desktop utilities. And then we're the next thing that you're looking at is the Synology Assistant. So we're going to go ahead and download this. This will help us try and find the NAS on the network instead of doing, I mean, you can use other utilities like IP scanner, things like that, but this is only going to pull up Synology NAS servers. So this thing's a great utility for that. So let's go ahead and hit download on here because we got Windows OS. So we're going to wait for this to download. We're going to go ahead and install this. So we're going to go ahead and hit run, hit yes, and go ahead and go through all the install steps. I'm not going to really show you because we already have it installed. 
So I'm going to cancel out of that. But if you don't have it, you just go through the install steps. It's really easy. Just next, 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 finish. All right, so we're going to go ahead and pull ours up. And you can see we already ran a scan on the network. And you can see I have three Synology servers. I have two that I use every day. And then I have another one that's that new one that got that DHCP address. So let's go ahead and hit connect. And that should open up your web browser to something like this. So this is my DS416 Slim, but you might see a picture of your 5-bay or your 8-bay Synology NAS. just depends on what model you have. Uh, but this is basically the same thing you can use for any Synology. So let's go ahead and hit Setup and then Install Now. And then now understand all the drives in your NAS are going to get erased and any data on them will get erased. So just so you know about that. So get hit I understand, hit OK. Now this will take a little bit depending on your network speed and the and the uh, speed of your NAS. Um, but it's basically going to be formatting a partition on one or two of the drives and it's going to be installing the Synology OS onto that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and pause it here because this could take, you know, five to ten minutes depending on your internet speed and everything like that. So I'll resume when we get back. All right, you can see it loaded up our page here as we opened it. So we're just going to name this NAS and then we're going to set an admin as your username. And then you can set up your password here. And hit next going to be preparing the storage space for it. All right, now we go ahead and if you have a quick connect ID, go ahead and put that information in. If you want to create one, you can do that here, but we're just going to skip this step because I don't like connecting uh, that to the cloud. So it's suggesting some apps to install, but I'm not going to do that because this is such a small little NAS. I'm not going to install the stuff on it, so we're going to go ahead and skip this step as well. And I'm not going to share the information with Synology, so I'm going to hit go. And then got it for the update. And remind me later for this. Or actually, no thanks. And then you're going to go through this quick tutorial. It's just going to show you where everything's at. I like to remove some of these things that I don't really use. Um, Security Advisor is a good thing to go through to... Um, you know, enable uh, limit login attempts, things like that. I have another video on uh, securing your Synology. So let's go into advanced. You can see I have a pending update. So that's an update you're going to want to do if you have that. Um, going to the info center, you can see um, all the specs of the Synology. Um, if you want to create your first uh, shared file, let's go into the file station. And then we can go to Create tab, or it looks like it already detected that we don't have any shared folders available, so it's wanting us to create one, so that's fine. Hit OK. And then we'll just name this Shared. Oh, first, before we get too ahead of ourselves here, we need to create a um, array. So let's go to Storage Manager. And wait for this to load up, and we'll go to our volume here and our storage pool. So actually, it looks like it already created it for us during the setup process. So I'm actually going to remove that. I'm going to hit remove. Hit yes, that's fine. She's letting us know all the data will be erased. Let's just remove that. Now, Synology will still work because it actually creates a separate partition away from those drives to install uh, the Synology Core OS on. So we'll wait for that to remove, and then we're going to create our own here in just a minute while this is being removed. All right, so let's go to Volume, hit Create. Then we're going to do, uh, we can go to Custom here, hit Next. New Storage Pool, that's fine. Just doing the better performance. So hit Next. And then we have choices from our RAID. So we can do a RAID 5, uh, which you need at least three drives. You can do RAID 1, 6, so RAID 5 will give you one drive fault tolerance RAID, and a decent amount of storage. RAID 6, you're going to get two uh, drives that can fail, but you're going to get a lot less storage. So it just depends on what you really need. RAID 10, it's kind of best of both worlds. Um, you can have up to two drives fail if they're not in the same um, array. It's kind of like RAID 1, but with four drives. 
So you can have the two drivers failing, but you also get the performance of RAID 0. So it's definitely nice. So we're going to actually do that RAID 10. So we'll do that. Hit next. We're going to select the four drives because all we care about is performance. Hit next. It's going to let us know we're going to erase the drives. Now when you do RAID 10, just so you're aware, we're only going to have like 480 gigs of storage. So it's basically cutting our storage in half. So if you really need more storage, then do RAID 5 or do the Synology RAID SHR is good too. And then SHR 2 is up to two drives that you can fail. It's kind of like RAID 6 and RAID 5 really. So we hit next, next again, and then apply. So you can see there's our 437 gigs. So like I said, you're not going to get a lot of storage, but you're going to get a lot better performance if that's what you need. So there you guys have it. We have our volume created. And now we can go ahead and create our first share. So go to File Station. It's going to pop up saying that we don't have one. That's fine. Hit OK. And then we hit Shared. Just going to call it like that. Then we got our new VOM here. I like to enable the recycling bit and then restrict it to the admins only because let's say someone, you let's say a friend or whoever or your wife or your kid, you know, you give them access to your Stanley drive and then they go in there and delete everything. So with you being admin, hopefully you didn't give them admin, but you can quickly go in the recycling and recover that data. But especially if you're on SSDs, I would have some kind of backup as well in place. So you can have kind of double backup. So hit apply. And we have our first shared drive created. So let's say we wanted to let someone have access to this. If you want everyone in the house to have access, no matter what, um, they don't see the ad, the recycling bin, but they can at least see all the files and don't need to log in. You can do guess and read and write, which I would not recommend. But if you wanted to do that, you could, you can, or you can create new users and you can assign, <clears throat> excuse me, you can assign them to the share drive. So there's your two ways to do it. So close out of here. And you can see there's a share drive. We're going to edit. And we can do other things like encrypt it, advanced permissions, disable directory browsing, etc. Users, where you can obviously create new users. Um, now the apps is the cool part. So let's go to Package Center. And they have all kinds of apps. So it's a grittier terms of service here. And yeah, all apps. That's fun. So you can install an antivirus protection. You can install notes. Uh, moments is like videos and photo library. Hyper backup is what you want to install to do cloud backups or to an external hard drive backup. So you want this to back up your Synology. Just because you can have one drive fail and you're still okay and you can pop in a new drive, you still want to have some kind of offsite backup. So keep that in mind when you got these. You can install a radio server, a surveillance station. I mean, I could go all day long. I mean, they have so many cool apps. You can actually install PHP, PHP Miami, having a SQL database and run a WordPress website. I mean, you can do all kinds of things with these. Um, so there you guys have it. Quick overview of this Synology. Get you up and running. Um, they have a lot of cool apps, so just definitely check them out. If you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. And if you have any other suggestions of any, any other videos, please let me know. Um, I'll be happy to take a look at it. All right, thanks, you guys. I'll see you in the next video.